Hi everyone, I'm Perry Bloomer. I'm the head of human resources and today we're going to talk about having the power to sell. What we mean by that is our six steps of the sale. This is what differentiates us from other companies out there in retail. Some companies just teach you basic sales criteria and they let you loose on the floor. Other companies have very complex systems where you've got to remember 8 million things. That's not what we do. Sales should be enjoyable and fun for both sides. So we've reduced our six steps to six steps. It's very simple. As we go through the six steps, there's going to be times where I need this audience right here to speak up and talk a little bit about those six steps. At the very end, we'll have an exercise. For those of you at the store, you're going to do that exercise with your store manager or your area manager or your ASM. So we'll end the, uh, extra, we'll end the video and then you'll get a chance to do the exercise there in your store. So let's talk about selling. Obviously, we are a retail company. That's what we're here for, right? We're here to make sales because that's what keeps the entire machine afloat. So let's talk about the six steps of the sale. As we get started, I'm going to ask for a helper. Can I have you, Miss Kelly? And Kelly is just going to go ahead and put all the six steps of the sale up here so we can refer to them as we go. Our process is called We Act, and you can see right up there, We Act, and then the dollar sign is the S. So the first step of the sale is the welcome. And as you guys, we talked about in Power to Wow, and I hope you guys have seen the Power to Wow tape, Power to Wow just tells us how to make an ordinary welcome that's sort of good with good customer service and change it into an experience welcome, something that really gets people feeling like they're welcome in our store and their family. We want to make sure they get acknowledged. The second step is engage. Engagement basically means that you're building rapport with somebody. You're not just there as a transaction. A transaction can be done by a vending machine, right? But you're not a vending machine, you're a person, and there's a reason they're buying that water from you and not a vending machine. Sometimes they need advice, sometimes they need a friendly smile. Engaging them is a chance to build that rapport. The S, or the dollar sign in WE ACT, stands for show, tell, and sell. This is where we really find out what that customer needs, and then we show it off to them. We tell them about it, we educate them about it, we make sure it is right for them. You know we sell everything from super high-end fashion to incredible souvenirs, to great accessories, just to a water and a banana and books. We sell a whole bunch of stuff, so we want to make sure that we're giving them the right item. Then our next one is add-on or upsell. For some reason, people are afraid of add-ons, but we're going to teach you some tricks with add-ons that are going to make it very simple and very easy. And for seasoned salespeople, this is actually the most fun part of the sale. And for those of you in commission stores, this is a really great way to build up your clientele and make those commissions sing. Then we have closing the sale. Closing the sale is exactly what it sounds like. The time has come for us to ring up the sale and make sure the customer is ready to move forward. So we'll talk a little bit about that piece. And the last step is not just thanking somebody. Thanking somebody would be great customer service, would it not? But we're going to thank them and we're going to invite them back. And we're going to talk also a little bit about clienteling there and building up a clientele that comes to see you all the time. Especially in our fashion and accessory stores, this is really crucial to having a better time at work and to making a lot more money for yourself. So those are the six steps. They sound pretty simple. They are very simple. A lot of them will feel very natural. I don't want you to feel like this is going to be some crazy thing that you're going to have to do a song and a dance every time a customer comes in the door. If you've got the right style of selling and you enjoy people and enjoy selling, a lot of this you're probably doing already. You just haven't labeled it the way we label it. So let's get going. Is my group excited? Come on now. And my, what you guys don't know is it's the very end of the day for these guys, so they're really trying to ramp up the excitement, and I totally appreciate it. I get it. All right, so let's talk about the welcome. The welcome starts with what we call the 10-second rule. As soon as somebody walks in the store, within 10 seconds, or they walk into the area of your kiosk, they should be greeted. 
We've all been someplace where we walk around and we can't find a salesperson, we don't see anybody, or worse yet, they're sitting behind the counter talking on the phone and just like not making eye contact with you at all. So we wanna make sure that every guest, every customer is welcomed within 10 seconds. That doesn't mean by everybody in the store. For those of you in larger stores, it doesn't have to be, hello, 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 hi, hi, welcome, welcome, we're so glad you're here. Just one time is fine, keep an eye on your other associates and just make sure they know that you've seen them and that we're excited that they're there. So if you say welcome like this, hi, thanks for coming in. That may sound like good customer service, but it's certainly not a wow and it's not experience. So we try to do things a little different with our welcome. Also, don't confuse this with the 10-foot rule. Some stores have the 10-foot rule, and I can name one major store that I won't, but it's kind of annoying because as you go through the whole store, every time an associate gets close to you, they pop up from behind a bookshelf and go, welcome, and you're like, ah! So it's not the 10-foot rule, it's just the 10-second rule, all right? So that's the first part of welcome, very simple. Make a really good impression. All those things that you learned in kindergarten are true. And that first thing that you learned in kindergarten was you never get a second chance to make a good first impression, right? So be smiling, be happy, be excited. Sometimes you've had a rough day, I get it, you're gonna fake it to make it. You're on MRG time, right? So we're here to be upbeat and exciting. Remember we talked in Power to Wow about that Byerly's guy who's always a Johnny on the spot with the right thing to say. That's our job. Right now, I am putting it on for you guys. You're gonna put it on for your customers. That's what we're here to do and we'll encourage you to get where you need to go, all right? So make a great first impression. If you don't think customers are impacted by you, your homework is the next time you go into shop someplace, I want you to only focus on the faces of the workers. And you will see workers that are so unhappy and you're gonna be like, yeah, I promise to myself, I will never look like that to a customer. I might feel it inside, I may be having a bad day, but I'm here to serve them, I'm gonna make sure that I'm on top of my game. When you look at surveys and statistics, they basically tell you if you don't greet a customer, if you don't say hello to them and you don't acknowledge them in, in any way, you have now only a 10% chance of actually selling something to them. Now, that may sound great. You don't have to do much work, but we won't be open very long if that's the attitude you have because we're here to sell people. So you can dramatically increase the chances of you having a less boring day and having some fun sales to um, ring up if you just acknowledge them. Just greet them. It's not that hard. It's basic common sense, you would think, but we're gonna be better at it than most people. In that welcome, you have to realize there are times where there's going to be multiple customers. Some of our stores, you may have single coverage. So do you just focus on the one customer that came in and ignore everyone else? No, you politely excuse yourself and say, oh, hi, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, if you'll wait just a moment, I'm just gonna greet this customer over here. Would that be all right? And you wait for their acknowledgement, because if you just walk away, you're ignoring them. And then you go over and say, hi, thank you so much for coming in. I'll be right over here if you need me. Just little things. And I promise you, the nice thing about all this, if you follow all this, your day will be a lot less dull. You'll have a lot more fun at work and the hours will kind of fly by. So make sure you have little polite statements that will allow you to sort of transition from one person to another. So here's an example of one. I'd like you guys to read them at your store and we'll start over here. Ron, would you read that first one for us right here? I need to step away for a second to welcome that guest. I will be right back, thank you. Isn't it nice that you told them what you were doing? If you're just standing there with someone and you say, hey, I just need to step away from us for a second, what you're saying is pretty much anything besides you is more important than you right now. So instead, tell them what you're doing. Say, oh, I'm just gonna greet that guest. I'm just gonna step away for a second, but I'm right here if you need me. I love that. Miss Angelou, would you read that second one out loud? Please excuse me, can you help that customer over there? I will be right back soon. All right, now there's a chance that those customers, I say, well, wait a minute, I really need to know about the so-and-so. Absolutely, I am here to help you. Do you need a price on that? Fantastic, I'll check that price. And then you go check the price and you help the other person. But people in general know that you may be the only one in the store, right? If you do get an angry customer, you just be polite as you can and you make it work the best you can. That's all we can ask of you. 
All right, so that was the first step of the sale. Hard, right? Oh boy, the amount of homework and the amount of learning I just heaped upon you for that one simple step. So when you see anything in red on the screen, I'd like you two at the stores to say it out loud. So this is a perfect welcome. Go for it. See? Easy peasy. And it's not just, hi, thanks for coming in. The more unique you can make it, the more special and the more it will stick out to a customer. So that's why we try to give you, again, just a little nicer way of saying things so it's not just wah, wah, service. It's actually a nice experience for customers. So there you go. Do I have your commitment that you think you'll be able to handle the first step of the sale? No reason, yes, right? I mean, and Barbara, your eyes went this big, yes. And I agree with you, there should be no reason why this should be tough, right? All right, good job. The next is to engage. And like we talked about before, the way to engage and the purpose of engagement is just building some rapport with somebody, getting to know them a little bit. Even if it's a super quick sale in an airport and they're running to a plane, if you're smiling and happy and you adapt your pace to their pace, they're gonna feel like it was a better experience than they had down the street. So that's what we're happy with. It's also the gateway to find out what you can do for them. This is where you're laying the groundwork so you know, oh, they're looking for some really nice boots. Great, I can start thinking about boots, what boots we have, how I can recommend the boots, the different functions of the boots, the different styles of the boots. All those things are running through your head as you're starting to engage with them and you're finding out more about what they want. Again, I like to back things up with science, people. And I don't mean science with Bunsen burners and, and test tubes. I just mean good old science of people. If you actually engage the person where you have some back and forth dialogue, the chance of you getting to sell something to that customer goes from one to five. You've got a much bigger chance. If you just say, hi, thanks so much for coming in, enjoy our store, and then you stand back and just wait behind the cash wrap for them to bring things to you, that is probably not going to increase your odds of selling where if you engage them, yes, it will. But how do we engage them? That's the question. So before we go there, true or false on that last question? Read that statement right there. When a customer tells you they just want to browse, let them go, but continue to keep an eye on them. Just in case they need you, you're ready to assist them quickly. True or false? Oh, no, it's false. We want you to walk right up on top of them, mirror their footsteps, get in their personal space, and watch them to make sure they buy something and they don't steal something, right? How many of you have ever been in a store where they did that, where they followed you like a hawk, you know? Yeah, and half the time you're thinking, do you think I'm going to steal something? Like, why are you? I don't, it doesn't even feel like they're trying to be customer service oriented. It feels so intrusive, right? They're in your space. So if you greet them and you start to engage and they say, oh, I just want to look around a little bit, I want to browse, that's fine. Keep an eye on them, be ready to re-engage if they're ready and you see those signs or they take a look at you or they touch something that you know a lot about and you're like, God, that sweater, it's the coolest sweater I've ever seen. It's built of this incredible fiber that gets softer every time you wash it but you don't have to crowd them. There are stores that are famous for that, but that's not us. We're not gonna crowd people. All right, so when you engage, you're going to have some sort of opening line. If that opening line has to do with business, meaning some one of our products, one of our stores, something in the store, then you don't need a bridge. But other things that you're going to say as an opening line may need a bridge to get you to talking about our products. So for example, if I say, oh my gosh, those are the coolest tennis shoes I've ever seen. I love Chucks. They're the best shoes ever made. Is that the only pair you have? And you're like, oh no, I've got 22 pairs. That's so cool. I collect them too. You know, speaking of collectibles, one of the most wonderful things about Welcome to Las Vegas stores is we sell these koozies that no one else ever sells. That was a bridge. I bridged into getting them to talk back about work, but we built some rapport and engaged over the fact that we both like Chucks, right? We think they're great shoes. There's other opening lines that you can use where you don't need a bridge. 
My favorite, when I worked at Harley Davidson for years, I was often out in the store and I would see we had a million customers and there weren't always salespeople. So even though I was the HR lady, I would sidle up to somebody and I'd say, if you won 200 bucks, what's the first thing you'd buy in here? Well, first they get all excited because just for a second they think they won something, right? But $200 is a great amount of money to spend at a Harley Davidson store and people would go, oh, well, if it was me, I'd buy that jacket. God, I love it. I know, isn't that the coolest jacket ever? They're literally talking about something in the store. Even if that's not what they were there to buy, it gets us started on the train. So that's an opening line that doesn't really need a bridge. So your opening lines, like I said, some need a bridge, some don't. If it has nothing to do with business, you're gonna need a bridge. If it has something to do with business, you don't need a bridge. So they encourage conversation. Should I just sit there and lecture the person? Oh my gosh, welcome to Marshall Russo. We have some of the most beautiful outfits you've ever seen. We've got Joseph Ripkoff, we've got Frank Lyman, we've got incredible price points. We've got this, we've got that, we've got this, we've got that, we have this too. This is also nice. What about this? This is a great thing to have too. And we have shoes. Did you know we had shoes? Sometimes we have purses. We even have luggage in one of our stores. Is that a conversation? No, that's a lecture, right? <laughs> so it's designed to have conversation. That means it's between two people. So typically you're gonna make them in question form. Oh my gosh, I love that blouse. I love animal prints. They're so in this year. Have you been watching that trend in magazines? Yes, what magazines do you watch? Because gosh, you've got a great eye. We have other animal trends here too. There's my bridge, right? Okay, so be unique. Be yourself, be different. Some of you have been in retail a long time and you probably have little things that work for you. Others of you, maybe this is your first real job in retail and you don't have a line. Listen to the people on the floor around you. If they have a great unique opening line, that's what we're looking for. There is nothing wrong with saying, oh my gosh, I love that blouse. But there's just something even more special about, if you won 200 bucks right now, what's the first thing you'd buy in here? You know, if your sense of humor is your style, use a little humor. If you're a fashionista and an expert on fabrics, talk a little bit about fabrics. Tell them why you work there, and why you chose this store, and why you love being there. What's the favorite thing that you have there? But make it unique to yourself if you can. Sometimes it takes a little practice, but the more unique you are, the more you stand out to the customer, and the more it feels like an experience and not just a sales pitch, right? So think about that. And who knows the difference between an open-ended question and a closed-ended question? Anyone know that? Learn it in school? An open-ended question, you know, Jared, you want to give it a shot? Go for it. An open-ended question is expecting an answer back. Right, besides yes or no, yes. right? An open-ended question is, how do you like that blouse? Oh my gosh, I love it. It's very airy and lightweight. It's so beautiful. A closed-ended question is, do you like that blouse? Yes. There's nothing else there, right? Or when you say to somebody, can I help you today? And they say what? No. No, no. <laughs> right? If you say, how can I help you today? They can say, oh, I'm just browsing. I'm looking a little bit, or I'm just looking for a gift. They may give you a cue as to what it is they want. At MRG, we also expand open-ended and closed-ended questions to mean one-word answers. If you say, hey, where are you from? Iowa. And you're like, I don't know a darn thing about Iowa. They've answered with one question. Chances are they're not going to say, Iowa, home of the Muscatine melon. Do you like melon? I love melon. Now, you may get a customer like that. That's great. But try to make sure you give them some sort of question that opens up a conversation, not just one word. And try not to get lazy. We've all been with that lazy salesperson that says, hi, thanks for coming in. Can I help you? No? Okay, I'll be right over here. You know, we've all probably heard that eight million times in our life. If we had a dime for every one of it, we wouldn't need a, wouldn't need a job at all. All right, so let's talk about some different open-ended questions. Ron, will you read that first one out loud there for me? Where are you visiting from today? Now, that's not my favorite, especially in Las Vegas and Atlantic City. I'll tell you why in a moment, but we'll keep going. All right, the next one. Go ahead, Miss Angelou. 
All right, nice. So shoes are adorable. Where did you get them? And I hope you saying them out loud too, those of you that are watching in the storeroom. Miss Barbara. What caught your eye and brought you in here? All right, now the ones that are in blue and boldface are really strong, right? Others you've kind of heard before, but it's nice. And these don't need a bridge because you get them talking about work right away. All right, and next one, Miss LV, what you got there? All right, yeah, so who are you buying this for? For whom are you buying this? Oh, it's for your daughter, that's great. I have a daughter too, how old is your daughter? Oh my gosh, we've got so many things for teenagers in here that they still think are cool, am I right? It's hard to buy a gift for a teenager. You're just engaging and having a normal conversation. It's not fake, we're not scripting it. There are some places that script you and tell you you have to talk about this and you have to talk about that. Be yourself, talk about what you like. You know, hopefully you're working at a store that has products that interest you and are fun and that you like, so you can talk about them. All right, next one. Giselle, I skipped you. There you go. What type of travel, what type of travel are you planning? Luggage? Right, so here's the thing. In our luggage stores, that's a great question. In many of our fashion stores, we have luggage as well. So if you see them standing by the luggage, say, oh, what kind of travel are you planning? Not, are you going on vacation? Because then what do they say? Nope. Yes. Hawaii, you know, something like that. All right, next. How'd you hear about us? How'd you hear about us? You know, Marshall Retail Group is not a store or a company that's known throughout the world, right? We have 8 million different brands of stores. So it's always fascinating to me if they came here before and they saw us or they just walked by and were attracted by the window. It's a nice way to start some conversation. And then, Jared, you've got the last one right there. How long will you be in town? And that's a great avenue that we'll talk a little bit later about how you can talk to them about how we send stuff. We ship and send it all over the country as well. So let me tell you about the where are you visiting from today. I had a handbag that I was in love with. I was so in love with this handbag that I actually wrote a poem about the handbag and put it on Facebook when the handbag started falling apart because I wanted a handbook. And I told my husband, look, I don't care about this, if this is a $4 handbag or if it's a $2,000 handbag, I have to find something that I love as much as this one, right? So I told him I was going to go to the Forum Shops, which is a huge mall within Caesars Palace. And you guys know those places. A lot of casinos have avenues of shopping and that kind of thing. And when you're in an airport, you see a thousand different shops. Every single shop I went into, from Coach to Gucci, to Harley Davidson, I went into a Harley store and looked at their bags, to Todd's, to Burberry, to Michael Kors, all the brands you can think of. I walked in, there's my husband and I, and the first thing anybody said, oh, where are you from? I'm local. Oh, where do you live? Henderson. Oh, that's a nice part of town. There was no more discussion and it got so annoying. And when you're in these big casinos where there's a million stores, that's what most of them use to open. So where are you from? And finally I told my husband, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm from population one, Nunyaville, Nunya business. You don't need to know where I'm from. Like I wanted to make something up and just be funny. And my husband's like, please don't. He's very grumpy and he's not outgoing like I am. But I got to tell you, if you're someplace where there are a myriad of stores, and because we deal with the travel business and tourists, I've got to say, let's get rid of that one, if at all possible. It's, if it's your favorite, okay. But I'm just saying, personally, you'll find yourself where people will say, you're the ninth person that's asked me that. And if they're locals, it's even more awkward, right? So just trying to tell you to come up with one of your own. All right, you know what happens when you see something in red. What do you got? There's, There's so, so much to look at here. What caught your eye? All right, does that one need a bridge? Nope. Why not? Why don't you think that one needs a bridge? It's, you're already asking about something about business, right? They're going to point to something in the store, so it's a nice one that doesn't need a bridge. Now, phew! We've gone through two whole steps of the sale already. I know you're exhausted. You can't even remember them, right? They're so tough and complex. You guys are doing fine. Welcome and engage. Now, do any of you have an opening line? Some of you have been in retail a long time. Does anybody have one that they, they have used that they like? No? Barbara, you don't have one? 
I can see that you're thinking of one. She's not going to share it with me because she's going to work on commission, right? I see how you are. <laughs> and I hope what you guys are thinking of one too. But if you have one that you use someplace else, that's fine. Go ahead and use it, right? It works for you and it feels natural. So if you have a unique opening line, great. My challenge to all of you is next time you see me, it'll probably be in one of your stores or in a training, I'd love you to come up and tell me what your opening line is, your unique one. What's mine? If I gave you $200. If you won 200 bucks, what would you buy right now? All right, don't let me lose you guys. Are you with me? You better be with me, okay. All right, so then we have show, tell, sell. This is the way we identify what the customer is looking for, and we start to really get into what I call the meat and potatoes of the sale. This is when we're gonna be doing some probing to identify what the customer needs. We left off with Jared, so we'll start with Ron. Ron, why don't you go ahead and read that one for me right there. Tell me, are you looking for something for yourself or for a gift? Perfect, all right, Angelou. Right, something casual or dressy. You're kind of start. You've already built rapport with them. They know you know that they want something. You're starting to narrow down what it is they want. What do you prefer? Lighter colors, darker colors? And remember, we're in the business of giving great advice. So you might say, you know, with your skin tone, you would look amazing in a lighter color. Have you thought about yellow? You know, you are an expert in what it is you sell. For those of you that go to fashion stores, you're going to see we actually do fashion shows twice a quarter, I mean twice a year, and you're going to get a chance to see what works on different body types, what the new styles are, so you'll get to know about your products. We have a variety here. Do you have any dietary restrictions that we need to accommodate? Let me tell you. And a lot of our stores now, we're getting all local product in. Little local artisan bakers, artisan candy people, and we've got gluten-free, fat-free, sugar-free, taste-free. We've got it all. So we've got a lot of interesting things. So you can feel free to talk to them about their dietary restrictions. This is your chance to make sure that you show them how much we respect our merchandise. You're not gonna throw it around, right? Here's a sweater, Ron, try that on. What do you think, right? Oh boy, I really want to go work at that place. So obviously, handle the merchandise with care. That makes sense, right? In addition to that, get them to feel it and touch it. Now you guys can't see this, but I'm holding a pointer here and I've been holding it all day. It has one of the coolest plastic surfaces I've ever felt. It's like really slick and it's kind of soft. Go ahead, what did I do there? Who has the pointer now? Customer the does. customer has the pointer. So you talk about why you like, and it is a cool plastic, isn't it? To be honest, it is a cool plastic. But you get them to touch and feel the merchandise. Take it out of the counter. Let them try a piece of the candy. Take it off the hanger and hold it up to them so they can see it in the light with their skin tone. Get them familiar with the product. Most people want good advice. That's what they're there for. You are the person they perceive to have that good advice on the products that we have. So get them to try things on. Get them to feel it for themselves. Have them read the ingredients. This is all natural. Can you believe it? When's the last time you read ingredients that didn't start with corn sucrose and, sh and sugar and syrup? Go ahead and read over those. So get them involved with the product. As you're doing that, remember there's two things we're there to educate them on. One is feature. A feature, and it starts with F, features are just facts, things that you need to know about the product. This is 100% cotton. This is made of plastic. This is um, gluten-free. It's just a fact about the product. This is an evening gown. This is by Frank Lyman Designs. You're able to tell them a fact. And that's great from a customer service perspective, right? You're giving them some information about the product. But how do we ramp that up to being an experience? Well, then we tell them a benefit. A benefit is what's in it for you. Why do you care that this plastic is very unique? Well, because it doesn't make my hands sweat when I'm holding it all day. Great. Why do you care that this t-shirt is 100% cotton? because it's gonna get softer and softer with every wash. Eventually, you're gonna to wanna to sleep in this shirt. 
It's like telling them, hey, this is a fact about the product, but here's something that just means something to you and me, Giselle. Isn't that cool? I'm thinking just of you when I tell you this. It's a benefit for you. So make sure you're talking about both features and benefits of products. If you just hold it up and say, this is two bucks, that's a nice feature, but what's the benefit? Maybe elsewhere they're five dollars. Okay, that's a benefit. That's gonna, this is going to save you a lot of money. Elsewhere they're five dollars, right? So think about that. There's two things you should know about every product you're touching. A feature and what else? A benefit. Exactly. All right. So these are the kinds of phrases that will help you focus your attention or, or their attention on the product. And I'm not sure where we left off, but Jarrett, we'll start with you this time. I want you to think about where you're working. So, Ron, what store are you going to be in? Do you know? I believe it's going to be Essentials. Essentials. Okay, so that has some souvenirs. It's got water. It's got candy bars. It's got all, uh, some accessories, all kinds of unique things. So think about what store you're going to be in and finish the sentence. So, Jared, did you see? Did you see our Welcome to Las Vegas t-shirts? Yes, that's great. It's got the sign on it. We're one of the very few companies out there that's licensed to use the Las Vegas sign. Isn't that cool? There's a little feature and a benefit because it's going to be unique to you. Woohoo! You love it. Miss Sarah. Did you know that these shoes go well with a variety of belts, including these over here? I love that. Did you know these shoes go well with a variety of belts, including the belts we have right over here? I love that. That's a little add-on sale on top of the engagement and the show tell sell. I like it. All right. You ready, LV? Yeah. All right. You might want to consider our products to review and really nice and a good body. Exactly. You might want to consider these products. They're really, really nice. And we've got some really sweet employees over here that are willing to show you the product. How great is that? Awesome. Miss Giselle. Now see, you got it easy. There's no finish to that. So you can just say, you're going to love this, right? And next, Miss Barbara. We've sold so many of those. We have a great variety of colors. I love that. We've sold so many of those because we have them in every color in the rainbow or because they've been in every fashion magazine or because everybody feels like they can't leave Las Vegas without one of these. This is called the bandwagon effect. Everybody's doing it. Don't you want to do it too? So it's just a little way to get people pumped up and excited. And you'll see that in some of our stores, like all of a sudden just one product will be like 12 people bought a snow globe. So all day you'll be talking about snow globes and then suddenly the snow globes are flying off the shelves. All right. You want to make sure when you're having conversations like this that you stay positive. You want to ask them little questions that lead to yes. You want to nod your head. If I say, oh my gosh, this weather is amazing, isn't it? If I'm nodding and looking at you, the chances are you're going to say, yes, this weather is amazing. And the more positive you are, the more people are going to say yes if they want to buy something. It's just science, folks. So isn't it nice to buy a local product? Isn't it nice to buy something that no one else has? We've got a lot of exclusives, both in fashion and at our um, Welcome to Las Vegas stores. That handbag would be great for a night out, wouldn't it? What are they going to say? No, I would never, I don't have nights out. Oh, okay, well, if it sounds like you're the type of person who likes to stay in, how about some pajamas, right? Stay positive. Don't say, you're right, I never go out too. The crime rate's too bad and we're all going to get hit by a car. You know, don't go negative. Try to stay positive. Your friends back home are going to love this, aren't they? Oh my God, they're going to be so jealous. Maybe you better buy two, <laughs> right? So you don't lose your best friend. All right, you know what the deal is when you see red. I see a lot of people in the candy bars. Did you see the s'mores flavor? Oh my gosh, it's my favorite. Now, I told you almost everything's going to be about candy in my classes, so just be prepared. But that way, you're showing them something that's there, you're telling them a little bit about it, and you're encouraging them to go over, look at it, try it, feel it, taste it, pick it up, read the ingredients. So one of the questions we typically ask our customers when we follow up with them is, did they get you to touch the product? Did they get you to engage the product? Did they share with you a feature or benefit about that product? And they'll want to know that stuff. People want to feel like you're the experts. 
All right, so next we have add-on. We're on the fourth step of our ladder. We're almost done. And you guys are gonna get to go home and not have me in your ear all day. So the add-on sale, please read this as I'm talking because your brain can work just as fast reading and listening at the same time. People are scared of add-on sales, but in reality, it's the easiest sale you will ever make. They've already made the decision to buy something. They're committed, their handbook is out, or their pocketbook is out, or their wallet's out, their checkbook is ready to go. They are ready. So if you add on, the odds really increase. If you suggest something, it's more than just selling. It's being a valuable resource to them. It is kind of nice that I need that belt with that shirt. It is kind of nice that those pants match this jacket. You know, you can talk about those things and people do appreciate it. Now, what I'll tell you is don't go overboard, you know, but at the same time, give it a shot because here's the interesting thing. If I told you that the odds at every casino is 50%, 50% of the time you're gonna win, we would all quit our jobs right now and be professional gamblers, would we not? We would all race to the casinos. That would be amazing. But studies have shown again and again that an add-on, 50% of the time, they're gonna say yes. Because they're already excited and buying it and you're smart and it seems like a good idea. Half the time they're gonna say yes. So try it. Say to them, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm, you're gonna look amazing in that shirt. You know what? I've got some earrings that match that shirt beautifully and they would really work with your eyes. Do you wanna take a look at them real quick? Half the time they're gonna say, absolutely, let's do it. Where can you upsell? Everywhere. Everywhere, and we'll talk about that. Where can you do it? Okay, let's listen to a few of these phrases. Ron, you wanna start with this first one for me? Would you like a water to go along with your snacks? How hard was that? Chances are they'll go, sure, right? How many? 17, okay, I'm fine with that. All right, then you have the did you know statements. Go ahead, Miss Angelou, read that one for me. There is a beautiful blouse. Did you know that this bracelet goes great with it? Right, that's a beautiful blouse. This bracelet goes great with it. Hey, I see you're buying that t-shirt. Did you know we've got hats that actually coordinate with that? They go with them? They look really cute together. If you're buying them for your kids, you might need three of them. If you've got three kids, you don't want to not bring a gift home to one of those kids. You might want to consider this purse to go with those shoes. You might want to consider this hat to go along with that t-shirt. How about this one? Elvie, why don't you read that one for me? Did you see the new blouse we just received? Here, let me show you. We are getting new things in our stores every day. So even if it's a person that goes to the airport every week because they fly out of town every week, we get new stuff. You can show them the new things that have come in. We also have some things that are exclusive to us that it's interesting to show people. And you can always say, hey, did you see our shot glasses? Right? There's always shot glasses. Come on. You're on vacation. So how do you do this? You just keep building, right? You, oh, shot glasses, perfect. Now, is there anything? Do you want a water before you go? It's hot outside. You want a water? Okay, good. All right, now, of course, I just sold you water. Are you hungry? Because we've got chips, we've got snacks, we've got everything. There are people that will let you add on 17 things, right? Just keep building, don't be afraid. The odds are on your side. May the odds ever be in your favor. The odds are totally on your side that they're gonna say yes. Have confidence, don't be afraid. Also, think of your favorite go-tos. I know when I worked at Harley, I always sold bells. The bell is something very specific to people that ride. A bell is a little good luck thing that wards off evil spirits and keeps them from uh, crashing or getting hurt on their motorcycle. But the legend of the bell is you can't buy it for yourself. That's bad luck, it has to be a gift. So I got a hold of a little thing like that bell. I told that story to every person that came in. You might find out that we have these interesting booby koozies. They're funny koozies. They are only sold at our stores. Tell them the booby koozie story and try to get them to get a koozie. It's kind of fun. So have your little personal favorites. Maybe it's something you bought there that you wear all the time. Say, look, yeah, I wear it all the time. It's right here. I love that item. Keep going until you hear, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. No, thanks. Don't keep pushing. There are those stores that say, go till you hear no and do it one more time. That's not us, right? So you don't have to keep pushing and be a shark. 
Once they made it clear they're not interested, go ahead and ring up the rest of the sale and move on with their day so our customers are happy with us. The job isn't just to rake them over the coals and wring every dime out of them as hard as you can. All right? So there's your add-on. Let's hear you guys do it. There you go. It's called the assumptive close. How many would you like? I'm assuming you're going to say yes. So I'm just figuring out how many I should get. I'm already halfway to the water cooler, right? Easy, 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 easy. Don't be afraid of add-ons. Give it a try. And you know what? The first few times you're successful, you're going to be like, oh my god, why didn't I do this earlier? This is so easy, and it's kind of fun. All right, so then you're going to close the sale. There's two things you need to look for. One. Are they really ready to close? And two, if they are, how do I get them over to that register? So the first thing you have to think is, gee, I wonder if they're ready. Well, there's buying signals out there. People will say things that mean they're ready. They're ready to go. Don't keep going on talking about the item. You've already sold it. They're ready. Let's start walking them to the register and get them sold. So if they say, can I get it mailed to me? Absolutely. In our stores, we ship. We do what we call a send sale. We will ship it to them. You will often get people that say, oh my gosh, because I'm traveling, I would buy four more of those, but I, my luggage is already packed. No problem, we can ship that to you, right? And that pretty much means they're ready to buy something. If they're asking, we can ship it to them. Can I buy online? Well, we don't have online. You can say, better yet, I can be your personal shopper. For those of you at Marshall Russo and Shoes, I'd, be, I'd love to be your personal shopper. If you just feel comfortable giving me your cell phone, I can take pictures of the new styles now that I know what you like. I'll send them to you if you like them. We'll call each other and we'll send them out to you. We have people that make a lot of money doing that. One of our luggage gentlemen who actually works for, for Toomey in Denver, he is, I can't even, I'm not even tell you what he's going to make this year because it's like unbelievable, but he has clientele and books and he keeps them and he knows what styles they like and what they're looking for. And when things come in, he sends them pictures. We have a lot of people that do that at Marshall Russo, Paradiso, Sierra, AKA, Masura, Shoes, Bella Scarpa. It's a great way to have your clientele um, come back again and again. So does that come in blue as well? That means they're probably interested in it as blue as well, right? These are all little signals that tell you, yes, they're ready to buy. But what happens if you're not sure? You've been standing around with them for a while. You know, I've had some good signals, so I'm going to say, hey, let's go ahead and take these to register and I'll get you on your way. And they follow you, good. But I'm not sure if they're there yet. Well, you can do what's called a trial close. You just ask them little questions to get their temperature on if they're ready to go. So, shall I take that to the register for you? What's the worst they can say? No. No. Say, okay, not yet, no problem. You go ahead and keep looking. I'm right here if you need me. Did you want that in green as well? Because I've got a green one. You know, you can still keep talking with them. You can say, oh, it looks like you're all set. And if they say, yep, I'm feeling pretty good, then say, great, let's go on over to the register, or I'll take this over there. Let me take all that for you, and I'll take it over to the register and start getting it folded up for you so you can do one last look around the store. Then their hands are open to buy more, right? You're going to look amazing when you wear this. Oh, my gosh, Rebecca is going to die when you get this home, right? Because you've already talked to her, and you know Rebecca's her daughter, right? Little things that you can do to make sure if they're ready to close. And when they are, what do you say? Let me take all this to the register for you so you can keep looking. All right. Hard, right? I mean, this is hard stuff. Those are five steps that are just killing you. They're so hard. And now is the hardest one of all. You have to be nice. I know it. It's just horrible, horrible things I'm asking you to do. So regular good old customer service people, they thank people all the time. It's just natural. If I just threw this at you right now and you caught it, you'd probably go, thank you. You know, just when someone hands you something, it's natural to say thank you. So that's good service. But we go an extra step. We want them to feel like family. We want them to feel like we're their personal place to go. We want them to feel like we're the secret little shop that they found on the, on the coast of the ocean and that they can always come to if they're in Atlantic City, right? So we also invite them back. 
hey, I'd really want to see you next time you come back. Here's my card. Here's my number. I hope you come back and visit us again. Wow, I'd love to be your personal shopper. I mean, that is a great way, and it's fun. You are basically styling people for a living, and it's really fun if you're a fashionista. Come back anytime because I would love to help you again. Hey, I hope when you fly through, you'll stop by and just say how your trip was. It doesn't even have to be that they buy anything. We have one gal in one of our stores in the airport who always checks people's flights for them to see if they're on time on her phone. I mean, it's just like the nice, so people will come in there and be like, hey, is my flight on time? She's like, oh, yep, you're good to go. Sometimes they buy something, sometimes they don't, but she's creating a great experience for them. I'd love to have you return, and next time, bring your husband with you. There's so many cool things at Masura next door for men that I know we'd get a kick out of it. So invite them back. Make sense? So let's give it a shot. You ready? Thank you so much. All right, it's just about being nice and friendly. So here's what's going to happen next. And here in the class, I'm going to turn you over to Kelly. For those of you that are watching on the tape, I want you to go grab your store manager, your ASM or your area manager who's walking you through the, the uh, process today. And we're going to show you how easy these six steps flow and how you can take them a little bit higher and just bring them a, a notch above all those other horrible customer service people out there. We're going to be customer experience people. So that way you have the power to sell. Let's talk about our six steps real quick. What's the first one? Welcome. Welcome. What's the second one? Engage. Third one? Show Next one? Next one? Close the sales. And? Thank them and invite them back. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Let's pass you over to Kelly.